another vintage laptop that's been sitting for no less than seven years to show you guys. Um, this laptop was put in storage. I'm going to say, I think the seven year estimate is a little conservative, but I know it hasn't seen the light of day in seven years. It may have been sitting in this closet. If I were to guess, I would say probably eight or nine years, um, give or take. But nevertheless, it was, uh, we were cleaning out the closet and it had to go. So, here it is. This is, as you can tell by the title, I've already displayed it, I'm sure. This is a Macintosh iBook. This is not the toilet seat iBook. I don't have one to show you. Unfortunately, I sold the one I had. But here is the synopsis on the bag. iBook, OS 10.4.7. Have the password and name 500 megahertz g3 megahertz sorry 384 meg of ram it's been upgraded from its stock configuration now let's look at the typical wear spots on these um now i have been a mac technician since 2007. i have seen a lot of these actually more than i care to remember and I can tell you that they have hallmark wear indicators that occur when the machine is used through normal use. One of those would be scratching on the lid. And you can see a scratch here and here. They always scratch, and the scratches, because of the nature of the design, it's a transparent acrylic lid. Um, actually, it's made from a, um, I think, polycarbonate and it's painted white on the inside so it creates some real weird shadows now these scratches can be buffed out with a magic eraser and some kind of a liquid cleaner like a Windex or something just as a lubricant and it works pretty well I've done it on a few now the other thing is because of Apple's form over function design nature um, the painted plastic rim is painted silver and they always develop um, scratches and uh, discoloration around this rim. This one doesn't have that problem. The other thing is they always crack right here. Right where that screw is, there's always a crack right there. Almost like how Howard Johnson always leaves a light on for you, these always crack here and here. Right on the display housing. This one has no such cracks. You see where I'm going with this? Here and here. No cracks. The other thing is the feet, made of rubber, are mounted to a plastic piece that clips into the um, into this uh, other piece of plastic. These feet always break off. This one does not have missing feet. What a feat that is, I said. What a feat. Oh. Okay. The other thing I find on these is right in the corners here. The white paint typically flakes off. Once again, we have no indicators of wear. What is going on here? This is impossible. This battery looks to have been replaced. It is not discolored at the same rate, but that doesn't always mean anything. This is an original Apple battery. Now, the thing is, the batteries and the machine's housings were always manufactured separately from one another. These are made in one facility, the pans are made in another. Now, why does this matter? Well, you'll notice that they discolored at, the same, at a different rate. That is not unusual. And I can look at some of the scratching on the back of the battery. It doesn't correspond to the scratching on the bottom of the machine, so it's likely that this battery was in fact replaced at one point. I can always tell if they've ever been taken apart. Underneath, you'll see, yeah, this one has been. You'll see there's a, there's a clip here. You see the scratching on the back of the plastic where the white is missing? That indicates that more than likely 
this lower pan has been separated at one point from the main housing. And a lot of times when these are serviced, because some technicians aren't as detail-oriented as others, these springs and clips, or, or, um, or plungers, sometimes get lost during the disassembly process. You also want to look for missing screws. There are none. So we're in good shape here. So let's put this battery back in. Now, this machine has a number 30 on it. What does that mean? Well, this machine, at one point in its life, was part of a mobile lab, so it would have been used by students. I'm curious, I'm thinking to myself, why is this not in that mobile lab? I don't know. It's possible that it had died and had been replaced because it was not economical to repair. But I don't understand why that would have happened. Now, we're back inside the machine. This is where things get really, really interesting. This keyboard, take a look at it. What's wrong with this picture? I have never seen a keyboard this clean, and I've been saying that a lot lately on these, uh, with these videos. I have ne like Every time I find something, it's like the cleanest version I've ever found in my life. Uh, this is no exception. This keyboard... If it hasn't been replaced recently, I would be surprised. And by recently, I mean, well, very recently. Um, let's pop it out, take a look inside. It does not have a replacement motherboard tag, so it has the original motherboard. Um, I don't think, I'm starting to think that this one hasn't been disassembled ever because, well, it is missing the airport card. That's curious. Um... But it still has this sticker on it. Normally this gets torn off and not replaced. At least that's what I found. The memory upgrade has been done on it. Obviously it did not ship with 384 megs of RAM. That was uh, not likely. This machine would have been purchased new sometime in 2001. Possibly 2002. So... keyboard reattached and then we're going to put some power to it yeah the keyboard is held in by a magnet and a couple of clips and was this the right keyboard for this machine um, oh yep yep it goes right in there now I had acquired one of these from a consumer uh, very recently a couple years ago my neighbor had one and he gave it to me, as it was his, his, his daughter's machine. And it was in almost as good condition as this, but not quite. What happened to that machine? Well, I was using it as my primary portable, because I had an iMac at the time, and I needed a laptop, and it was, well, this was in 2008, so, you know, I didn't need performance. Let's see if this lights up. No, it's not lighting up. Um, that could be a problem. Um, actually, no, this may not be the right adapter. I'm starting to think. This is not the right adapter for this machine. I have one upstairs I can use, but that's the wrong adapter. Try to turn it on. It's working. I heard some, there it goes. Let's see what we got here. said it wouldn't boot. There's probably something wrong with it. <laughs> it's why it's in the closet. Uh, we have an Apple logo. That's a good sign. Did that... that sign did say it didn't boot, is that right? Huh. But this is an original model. This is the original version of the iBook, because it's silver painted. Which leads me to another topic. The paint always wears right here and here. The trackpads always wear out. I don't understand it. This machine is somehow, uh, it has escaped age miraculously. It, it just didn't age. I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. But it did not age.
and it's missing the airport card. I wonder why that is. Well, let me put in my secret password. No. No. What? No. No. My magic word isn't... Up, oh, up, oh, got it. Took a few tries. Well, it started right up after at least seven years of sitting in purgatory. And it looks like it has one of our standard images for one of our groups. So, there we go. It runs. It, it, it runs. I, I don't understand why. The notes said it didn't work. But, 500 megahertz power PC G4. 1047 is what it's running. Which is probably the newest version of Mac OS that will economically run on such a workhorse. PowerBook 4.1 is the model. That was when they were still using the PowerBook name for the iBooks uh, for the system identifier machine model. If I'm not mistaken, this should have a 60, mega, a 60 gigabyte hard drive. And it has... where am I looking? I'm looking for parallel ATA. Because it doesn't have any SATA devices. Oh, there it is, ATA. It is currently sporting a Toshiba 10 gig hard drive. All right, great. Well, that's it. Oh, another thing. These little knobs here, these buttons, they always fall off on these. Um, the latches usually always break. Uh, this one's not broken. I say this is the survivor of the bunch. Believe it or not, this is the only one left in my organization, and it was actually headed for the trash, so I've saved another classic from the dustbin. Yippee, hooray for me. I deserve an award. No, I don't. But I saved it. Well, guys, uh, that concludes our video. I hope you've enjoyed, and uh, stay tuned for more. So it is now the next day, and uh, I um, I came home from work, and I left the house at about 6.45, give or take, and uh, I uh, turned my iBook on just, you know, to see how the battery runs, and um, I, I ran it off the battery exclusively, and uh, that was... Um, it's now 9.44, so it's been running for uh, almost three hours. Wow. Wow. This thing has been running for three hours on, on a full charge, and I can't believe it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's actually incredible. It is relatively hot and by the way I turned off all power management settings so the only thing that's been you know probably power cycling was the uh, the CPU but everything else has just been kicking away full bore full brightness all right not quite close to it that is amazing that is uh, that is freaking amazing this thing has a very strong battery in it. I left this on too, and as you can clearly see, it 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 went dead. Done so. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. By the way, what model is this? And it it does have FireWire. That's cool. I don't have one of these video adapters though. I don't have any of those left. Huh. Wow.
still have 57 minutes left. Damn. Now that's awesome battery life right there. You know, it's really sad though. I mean, Apple had a great thing going with the toilet seat iBook. Um, but they redesigned them to be much sleeker and more professional looking and to appeal to a wider audience. And, um, unfortunately, the sacrifice was in durability. I mean, this machine is, I mean, it's lasted all these years because it's been stuck in a bag for most of them. But, and by the way, I cleaned it up a little bit. It was kind of a yellowish tint to the, uh, to the, to the wrist pad area. I cleaned that off, and I cleaned the number 30 off. But as I was saying, I mean, the sacrifice was great. I mean, they did gain a few features, or a few, you know... Yeah, they gained a few things when they redesigned them to this model, but uh, mainly stereo speakers, um, you know, that was a big deal in a way. Um, but they gained a few ports for connectivity purposes, you know. I mean, it's a better machine for usability's sake, but as far as durability goes, not anywhere near what it used to be, you know. I meant to find out if this one had the optional super drive. I don't think it does. I think we were, these were purchased without them. Yeah, there is no super drive. It's just a CD-ROM drive. That's all it is. And um, that's unfortunate. Will it read DVDs? Because if it does, if it does, I don't think it does. Oh, it would have to. Let's give it a try. I don't think it does. I, I, I should look up the specs for this machine. I know it was a lower end version, but I don't know what the full specs Here's a DVD. I don't think these will, I think this is only a CD-ROM. Correct me if I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, there was an awkward period where the DVD was still an option on some of the lower-end iBooks. And let's see if this is one of those. No, it actually read it. Let's see if we can play it. Yep, I have to set the region code. It's never been set before. So this is likely the very first time this has ever read a DVD. Pretty cool. Just watch it go. Hey! That's pretty cool. It works. I just got a sick idea. I could toss, I think I have a 60 or an 80 gig. I might even have a 100 gigabyte IDE hard drive I could stuff in this, load it up with some movies. What the hell? Use it as a portable DVD player or movie player. Small enough, right? Hmm. I think I have a project. What do you say? The stuff, uh, then again, I have to make sure this thing is even capable of playing a, um, an AVI file. I'm sure it can. But that has to be proven first. I mean, you can't really stuff many movies on a 10 gigabyte hard drive. My iPod has a bigger storage capacity. Um, I have a 16 gigabyte iPod. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of an issue there. Just trying to figure out if I can find an, an actual bona fide use for this laptop because it, it is cool. It is a pretty cool machine. Running 10.4 is the newest OS it can run, and even that is pushing it. But it does play DVDs. That is a good thing. Still going. 
Jesus. I think we might actually get almost four hours out of this battery. I'm just going to let it play the DVD. Just let it run the battery down. What the hell, right? That might be worth a laugh. Three hours and 35 minutes of run time and it's still going. Finally got the low battery warning. You're at three minutes of remaining time, 1% of battery life. Holy crap. And that's after the battery had been charged after sitting for about six or seven years. That's pretty good.